All right, guys, so we got a feel-good story here uh, about a based professor that won his job back after being fired over a black privilege <laughs> tweet. Now, this story right here, guys, is going to show us how a lot of these woke universities uh, simply don't believe in free speech unless it is the free speech of uh, woke race baiting academics right because they can freely uh speak and say whatever they want no matter how uh radicalized it is no matter how racist it is no matter how controversial it doesn't matter right they can say what they want however if somebody says something contrary to them that uh seems to be a little bit controversial um that person might lose their job right they might lose their livelihoods right just for pushing back against woke academia and that is what the university of central florida tried to do to this professor however it backfired and it looks like it might backfire on them big time so i want to talk about that but before i get in that i just want to let you guys know if you like my channel and you want to support my channel you can do so using the links in the description below you can support the patreon you can support the paypal you support the merch there are multiple ways to support the channel if you would like to do so so without further ado let's play this news clip about how University of Central Florida professor Mr. Charles Nagy got his job back after being fired over a black privilege tweet. Take a look. A UCF professor who was fired following controversial comments has his job back. The professor had tenure, says he was fired unfairly. Fox 35's Danielle Lama is live with the responses from both sides of that issue tonight. Danielle. UCF officials say they are required to follow this new ruling. The professor's job has been reinstated, and he tells me he intends to return to campus. I want to go back. I want to make a stand for free speech, academic freedom. Controversial UCF professor Charles Negi has his job back. After his firing in January of last year, he says he filed a grievance against the university. We just learned that an arbitrator has decided to reinstate him. They fired a tenured professor, me, and they cut me off my income right away, which they cannot do unless there were some justified reason. Negi became the center of protests after posting this tweet around the time of George Floyd's murder. It said, sincere question, if African Americans as a group had the same behavioral profile as Asian Americans, on average performing the best academically, having the highest income, committing the lowest crime, etc., would we still be proclaiming systematic racism exists? UCF said his firing didn't have to do with the tweet, instead pointing to student complaints, claiming he created a hostile style learning environment. Still, the arbitrator writing the school did not have just cause to terminate him. Not everyone agrees with the decision. I understand granting someone a second chance, but it shouldn't just be that easy for someone with claims as that with ignorance as strong as that to just simply get back into position. A new statement from the university says UCF stands by the actions taken following a thorough investigation that found repeated misconduct in Professor Negi's classroom, including imposing his views about religion, sex and race. However, we are obligated to follow the arbitrator's ruling. The purpose of the university is not to make people feel comfortable. This is not a church. This is not a social gathering. The purpose of the university is to make you uncomfortable and make you think about things. Negi tells me that he plans to return in the fall if possible. He also says he is planning on suing the university. Reporting live from UCF campus tonight, Daniel Lama, Fox 35 News. Yeah, so I know UCF is their own university, right? And uh, they don't necessarily represent all universities in the country. But I've never seen a professor uh, get fired. Or put it this way, I've never seen a woke professor get fired for incorporating their own views on race, religion, or whatever in the classroom. I mean, we see this stuff all the time. And you're trying to tell me that this man got fired for a tweet on black privilege, okay, at this university, but other professors that say things like this don't get fired? Finally, that, we, uh, that whites learn to be white. That suggestion by Tandika is that whites are not born white. They have to become white. And her suggestion is that white children who were not white originally, they were born human. Little by little, they have to be abused into becoming white humans. And this abuse is sometimes physical, right? Of being physically disciplined into whiteness, such as being bullied into whiteness. That's a phrase I like to use, whiteness as bully. But also it's psychological and cultural. 
and it becomes with caretakers and guardians, not the least of which the more important caretakers and guardians are, of course, the white family, parents, etc. But it extends to the white nationhood as a caretaker, the white social system, the white social welfare, the white governance system. They also discipline and abuse white humans into whiteness. That is a very provocative statement. I would totally recommend reading that book. Because if we believe that history starts for us when white people drag us to these shores, then we can never get outside of the notion that this is going to be our existential struggle. All things that begin end. White folks are not infinite and eternal, right? They ain't gonna go on for infinity and infinity. And that's super important to remember that white colonialism and imperialism has a beginning. And in my way of thinking about the world, that means it has an end. And so part of what we are trying to do is to imagine what it, what are the steps that we must take to get to the other side of this very inconvenient, you know, epochal interruption of like black and indigenous world making. I mean, does that give people comfort on the day to day when you like just having to deal with white folks and the tra you know, the travesties that they create and the Bro. sense that they want to destroy the planet? Nah. Still here with Dr. Aruna Kilinani as we talk exclusively about her content of her virtual talk, The Psychopathic Problem of the White Mind. W would it be fair to say, based on your expertise, that white people are psychopathic? I think I I think so. Yeah, I mean I think that there's many lies that and I had didn't get to that part because this what I delivered was only um, part of a first series of talks. But the way the level of lying that white people do that has started since col colonialism, we're just used to it. Do serious justice works, and it's a strategy. It's a strategy to to, um, to pretend that like all white people are individuals. <laughs> Uh, especially when you look at the wealth numbers. In fact, people who uh, grow up here and consider themselves very Southern would agree that manners have a very complicated role in sustaining oppression, right? And if we're not going to talk about that, and we're not going to talk about manners as a tool to cover, like, I feel like yeah so as you guys can see there um academia is filled with extremist racialized rhetoric right um that <laughs> includes calling white people psychotic right claiming that they get in the way of world making for non-white folks okay uh waiting for white supremacy to end uh saying all types of crazy stuff okay but if you make a tweet in which you say oh you know there's some black privilege and if black people acted you know the same way the asians did right they showed the same characteristics as asians then you know we'll be questioning the systemic racism narrative okay um because the system's supposed to be systemically racist against non-whites but for whatever reason uh asians are thriving right again i think that's the point that that professor was trying to make so if you tweet something out like that he didn't even say it in class and he may have said it in class but if you tweet something out like that you can lose your job now the university is saying that they didn't fire him for that tweet but we know they fired the man for the tweet the guy was tenured right he was tenured and now all of a sudden students are uh complaining about inappropriate behavior okay in class okay and how they're uncomfortable and all this other stuff when the guy again has been teaching there for many 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 years now all of a sudden this stuff is coming out after that tweet no these students started complaining after that tweet, right? They didn't like the fact that he tweeted that and that he has a job there. So, so they tried to get the man fired. And this university, uh, the University of Central Florida, that apparently doesn't believe in free speech, uh, capitulated to their demands, right? Now, an arbitrator found that, no, 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 you can't fire this professor for that tweet because that is his freedom of speech, right? That's his freedom of speech. Uh, and he's now been reinstated back in the job and he claims he's going to sue the university like he should, right? But my, my whole point in this video, guys, is that ain't it amazing how if you put out a tweet in which you say something that I don't even think is all that controversial, to be quite honest with you, like saying that there's black privilege, you can be fired. But you can say all types of stuff about white folks, right? And, you know, nothing's going to happen to you. They're going to say, oh, no, well, that's just, that's just freedom of speech, right? They're allowed to say that, right? That That's... Uh, legitimate academic uh, conversation, right? But what he's saying is not legitimate academic conversation. I don't understand how this works. You're either allowed to say this type of stuff in university or you're not. It seems like you're only allowed to say this type of stuff if it is a woke leftist narrative. That's it. 
That's it. If you say anything else outside of that, uh, you're going to be fired for it, right? And this is what I'm talking about. Academia has become a place where only leftist woke uh, speech is allowed. That's it. Everything else is banned. If you are a non-woke professor or academic in academia, you have a hard time getting your ideas pushed to the forefront of the conversation, right? You're going to automatically be discredited, okay? Because, again, all the universities are filled with woke academics and administrators as well, too. They all go along with it. And the students are woke, right? So this is how it works. This is how it works. So, again, I just find it interesting how every time we look, we see a professor getting fired, right, for saying something that's, you know, considered to be extreme but not woke, right, and not leftist. But these woke leftist professors can say whatever they want, no matter how controversial it is, and they can get away with it. When the reality is, is that all that speech should be allowed, right? I've never called for a woke academic who says something <laughs> like these professors have said in, in those video clips that I showed you guys. I never called for them to be fired. I believe that if they can make those claims, then people on the other side should make whatever claims they want to make. Okay? And you let the battle of ideas play out, right? I don't want any censorship. However, the left, they want censorship. They want censorship of any opposing views that they don't agree with. Okay, which is the difference between people that are principled on this stuff and people that are not principled on it, right? That's the difference. So uh, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.